Welcome to another Fast Tech video. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix your PS3 if it's no longer reading your game discs or your Blu ray movies. And instead, you got this circle on the top right and it keeps spinning, but the game never shows up. I'm going to be showing you how to fix this on your own by either cleaning the laser or replacing it. And if everything fails, how to replace the entire disk drive. Before we start, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. FastTechStore.com carries all PlayStation parts, including PS3. We stock lasers, disk drives, power supplies, motherboards, and more. All parts purchased from FastTechStore.com include a lifetime warranty and free worldwide shipping. This video is exclusively for the OGs, the high rollers, and the big ballers who own a backwards compatible PS3. If you own one of these PS3s, you're living the high life, switching between women as you switch between PS3 and PS2 games. This includes CECHA, CECHB, CECHC, and CECHE PS3 consoles. You can check your PS3's model number here and at the back here. This PS3 does not read any Blu-ray movie or game disc. In this example, I'm trying to play a Grand Theft Auto 5 disc, but it does not show up in the game menu on screen. In cases where the PS3 is not reading a game disc because of a faulty laser, the disc drive would spin the disc and stop and spin again and then stop. And you'll notice a spinning circle on the top right corner of the screen, but the game will not show up. This is what a faulty laser sounds like. This PS3 also does not read PS2 discs or DVDs. Some of you might have a console that reads Blu-ray or PS3 discs, but does not read PS2 or DVDs, or it could be the other way around. But with PS3s that won't read a PS2 disc, even after replacing the laser, it could be due to a hardware problem with a motherboard, which I'll cover in a later video. Let's turn off this PS3 and let's get to work. As I mentioned earlier, but in case if you weren't paying attention, you can check your PS3's model number at the back here and down here. This video applies to all backwards compatible PS3's, C, E, C, H, A, B, C, and E. We're going to remove this sticker, which is going to reveal a rubber stop. We're going to pull the rubber stop and then we're going to see a Torx T8 H screw hiding in there. This bit is included in the FastTech Pro Auto Kit and is not a regular T8. Let's remove this screw. Once this screw's out of the way, we're gonna be able to pull up on the sliding cover at the front and it should come off like so. Make sure you don't lose this screw as without it, the front sliding cover will keep sliding off. Now there's some Phillips screws that we must get out of the way and we're going to switch to a Phillips bit on our FastTech Pro Auto Kit. Once those screws are removed, we're going to separate the front by lifting it up from the back and it should come off like so. With the cover removed, we have access to the disk drive. We're going to lift it up and remove the power cable by pulling it out like this. There's a clip here we're going to lift up and the cable should be released. This PS3 looks like it's been serviced before as it has a service sticker from a computer store from 2012. These screws here do not look right and it looks like it's missing a couple of screws from the logic board as well. For demonstrations, I like to use hardware that hasn't been tampered with. 
So we're gonna use a disk drive that hasn't been opened up already. And I'm gonna show you guys how to clean or replace the laser. There are some screws that we have to remove up top. There's three of these Phillips black screws on the front end that we have to remove. And these two silver screws at the bottom. Once those screws are out, we're gonna remove the Blu-ray drive shell by lifting it up from here and then lifting it off. Once we've gotten that out of the way, there's five Phillips screws that we have to remove. Once those screws are out of the way, we're going to lift up this magnet and then we're going to remove this tape here. And this tape here. Now we're going to lift up this mechanism and turn it to the left like the page of a book. There's two very thin wires that run on this side here. You do not want to break those. Now I'm going to show you guys how to clean the laser, which is the cheapest solution to this problem. So you want to get some isopropyl alcohol from fasttechstore.com and a cotton swab and then clean the laser in a circular motion with the alcohol soaked cotton swab as demonstrated here. You always want to go in a circular motion. You can use the dry end to wipe the alcohol off, but it should evaporate on its own even if you don't. Now let's close the disk drive, put this magnet on that helps secure the disk, and let's see if it worked. Let's connect the data cable, secure the clip, and we also need to connect the drive's power cable. Time to turn it on and put a disk in. And it looks like cleaning the laser did not fix our problem. If you have a Blu-ray drive that spins the disc and then stops and spins again and stops, you have a bad laser. Since cleaning the laser did not fix this PS3, now I'm going to demonstrate how you can replace the laser lens, which is the second most economical option when trying to fix this problem. Or you can replace the entire laser deck by removing these four screws and then there's three ribbon cables that have to be connected. But this is generally unnecessary and more complicated than just replacing the laser. So I'm going to be showing you how to replace just the laser since this is much more simple and cost effective than replacing the entire deck. There's two screws here that we have to remove. Let's use our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit and get these two black Phillips screws out of the way. They're very, very small and you do not want to lose them. Once those screws are out, we're going to use the pry tool from our Fast Tech Pro Toolkit and get these retaining clips off. That one flew across the room. Let me CNN this thing. There you go. Now we're going to remove this retaining clip by lifting it up and pulling out the ribbon cable. Now the laser can be lifted out like so. Let's get this rod out. And now we're ready to replace the laser. But before we do that, we have to remove this piece and transfer it over to our new laser. Let's remove this black Phillips screw. And now we're going to transfer this piece to our new laser from fasttechstore.com, which comes with a lifetime warranty and free worldwide shipping. Now let's install the rod that we removed from the old laser. And now we're going to install the left side of the laser on the left rod. This piece here goes up top and this piece goes under the rod like so. Let me show you this from another angle. That shiny part, the little metal piece that's sticking out that goes under the rod that part goes on top of the rod like this. Now we want to make sure that the laser moves up and down smoothly like so. 
Now let's install this retaining bracket that holds the rod in place. The left side goes on first and then we're going to push it down from the right side using a pry tool or your fingers and you should hear it click in place. Now for this one up top, same thing here. The left side goes on first and there's a little notch that goes on like this. And then we're going to push the right side down once that notch on the left side is in. Push it down the same way and you should hear a click. Now we're ready to install these two small Phillips screws here and here. Now let's install the data cable for the laser by pushing it in and then pushing down this clip. Now let's turn the roof mechanism over to the right very very carefully. If this video is helping you out in any way shape or form please be sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel as that helps us out a lot and it costs you nothing. Also check out FastTechStore.com if you need any PS3 parts or repair service. You can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. <laughs> Why give Voldemort your money so he can go buy another mega yacht or another maid? Spend your money instead at FastTechStore.com and get a lifetime warranty and free worldwide shipping. A company that does not force its employees to piss in Coca-Cola bottles. Now back to reassembly. Let's put this piece of tape back on that keeps this wire in place and there's another one on the side. Now let's put this magnet back on. Now let's install these Phillips screws that go here, 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 here. and here. Now let's install the cover back on, but make sure that these are straightened out before you do. Like so. And now we need to install three black Phillips screws up top here. These are black in color. Here. Here. And there's two Phillips screws that go at the bottom of the drive. Some drives may not have this metal piece, but if you have it, time to install it along with the two Phillips silver screws at the bottom here and here. Now the disk drive is ready to be reinstalled in the PS3. Now we're going to lift up this clip here and insert the data cable all the way in till the blue line and then push down the clip to secure the cable in place. Now let's install the power cable back in, make sure the black wire is facing north. Like this, otherwise you could short your disk drive logic board. At this point, we can test the game to see if it works, and this is what a disk drive that works, sounds, and looks like. If you have a disk drive that has mechanical issues, like this, I'm going to show you how to replace the entire disk drive. And to do that, you must keep the original logic board from your original console, which is this green circuit board right here. This has to be moved over to your new disk drive, otherwise your replacement disk drive will not work with your PS3. So we're going to hook up a Phillips bit to our FastTech Pro Auto Kit and remove five screws from the logic board. These two are already missing, so in this case, we're only removing three. But normally, there would be five. Like on this one here. Let's remove these screws to get the logic board out so we can transfer it over to the new drive. As I mentioned earlier, this step is critical for it to work with your PS3 as this logic board is paired to your PS3's motherboard. Once those screws are out, we're going to remove these ribbon cables by lifting up these clips. 
Once those clips have been lifted, we can pull out the ribbon cables and gently turn over the logic board to the left side and pull out this connector like so. Now we're going to transfer this logic board to our new Blu-ray drive. You can order these disk drives with or without a disk drive logic board from FastTechStore.com with a lifetime warranty. Let's install our original PS3 disk drive logic board into the new disk drive that we ordered from FastTechStore.com. This connector goes in like so, and then you're going to turn the logic board over to the right. We're going to push the ribbon cables in all the way to the blue line and then push down the clips to get the cables in place. Then we're going to install these black Phillips screws here. Here. Make sure you push down that metal cover and screw through here. Here. And here. Now you're ready to install your replacement drive with a lifetime warranty from FastTechStore.com by lifting up this clip, inserting the blue ribbon cable and pushing down the clip. If this clip comes out, be very careful with it because that clip is very, very sensitive and can break very easily. We're going to slide the cable in and then push down the clip till we feel like it's secure. You're going to feel it click. Now let's insert the power cable back in. The black wire is going to be facing north. This cable must be tucked in here and now we can test out our PS3. If replacing the Blu-ray drive as I demonstrated does not fix your problem, the only thing left that could be the culprit of the issue is the disk drive logic board. And the disk drive logic board is most definitely broken if your disk drive is not accepting disks at all. So if you have these issues, at this point you can switch out your disk drive logic board. The model for the KS400 is BMD001. Or you can switch out the entire disk drive which comes with a disk drive logic board already. But keep in mind that the PS3 requires a logic board to be connected for it to function properly. At this point you could also switch to a dual eye BD410 disk drive from later model PS3s which is supposedly more reliable. And it is lower in price than the KES400 equipped BD400 disk drive. Both model disk drives with a logic board pre-installed are available at FastTechStore.com with a lifetime warranty and free worldwide shipping. To pair or marry a new disk drive logic board to your PS3, it needs to be jailbroken. I've done a video on this topic already and will be doing another updated version very, very soon. Once your PS3 is jailbroken, you're going to need a USB drive that's formatted FAT32 or XFAT. Some newer USB 3.1 drives with a high capacity tend to not work. So if you need a compatible drive, you know where to go. Plug in your USB drive in your first or second USB port. Then go to network and custom firmware tools. Then we're going to go all the way down to dump tools. And in here, there's an option that says dump ERK. We're going to dump the ERK or the EID root key to the USB by pressing X. It might fail the first time as it did for me, but if it fails, don't worry, try again and eventually it will go through. And when it does, you'll see a green check. Your PS3 is also going to make a beep sound. Make sure you dump to USB and not HDD. Once that's done, we're going to go back and then we're going to go down to service tools. Then advanced service tools and then we're going to select the option that says toggle factory service mode. We're going to press X. It's going to ask us again if we want to go in factory service mode. We're going to press X one more time and then the PS3 is going to restart. Once the PS3 restarts, we are in factory service mode. We're going to go to network, custom firmware tools. Then we're going to go down to service tools, advanced service tools and we're going to select this option that says remarry Blu-ray drive. Make sure your USB is still plugged in and if it fails the first time, keep trying and eventually it will go through. Doesn't matter what PS3 I've tried this with, it always gives errors the first few times. But eventually it will go through and you'll see a green check mark 
which says CEX Drive INIT succeeded. And that means we've successfully married a new Blu-ray drive with a new logic board to our PS3. Now we must get out of factory service mode. So let's go to the network tab on the right, go up to custom firmware tools again, down to service tools, advanced service tools, and we're gonna select toggle factory service mode again and then press X. This time we're going out of factory service mode. Once the PS3 restarts, we have successfully remarried a new Blu-ray drive and now I'm gonna test the Grand Theft Auto 5 disc that was not working in the beginning of this video. And our Grand Theft Auto 5 disc is now loading. Unfortunately, this is one of those games that has a big installation, so I decided to test a different game instead. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. My currently most played console is the PS3 and the games I play on it are Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops 1, 2 and 3, mostly playing the zombies mode. There's still people who play and I suggest you pick up these games and play them if you haven't already because this is before the time where everything was about monetizing the game and squeezing every last dollar out of the customer through loot boxes and other in-game purchases. Old Call of Duty titles like these are going for 10 to $15 on Facebook Marketplace and eBay. There's no Fortnite-esque BS going on here. No Nicki Minaj player skins, none of that. Just good, fun gameplay. Now it's time for reassembly. You need to make sure that this cable here is tucked in like so, so it doesn't get caught in the case. The front side of the case goes on first and then you can pivot the case on like so. These long screws go in here, 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 and here, and the shortest screw goes in here in the corner. It's labeled with an S. Now we're going to use the Fastech Pro Auto Kit to tighten these screws. I suggest you pick up the screwdriver like one of those old Call of Duty games. Before the prices go up. Links in the description box and the pinned comment. The screwdriver is going to save you a lot of time when doing reassemblies. Now let's slide this cover back on and tighten this Torx T8H screw that secures the sliding cover in place. Once that screw is nice and tight, we're going to put the rubber stop back in and then you can put your warranty sticker back on if you want. Wait. Who's this handsome motherfucker? Oh, that's me. Now it's time for final testing. That concludes this video. If you need any kind of PS3 repair service or maintenance like a D-Lid, check us out at FastTechStore.com. We also stock all PS3 parts and we include a lifetime warranty and free worldwide shipping. If this content helps you out in any way, shape or form, please be sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel. This is Shiroz from FastTech signing out and I'll see you in the next one.